Hello and welcome to Decaying Winter Equipment Stereotypes. We'll be talking about some of the stigmas and or stereotypes associated with some equipments in Decaying Winter. These being the stuff you can use such as tear gas and liners and daggers. Some of these may be true, some of them may not apply. Remember, this is all just for fun. Let's go. Also, you don't have to, but it's free and it helps the channel out a lot. You can press the subscribe button and the like button and the bell button because buttons are made to be pressed. Okay, first up is the respirator and honestly, this one's a lot more utility compared to all the other equipments, which are typically better at doing damage or helping you in melee in some way. But yes, the respirator, honestly, I only ever see it used in Last Stranded or Holdout mode because the storm hurts super hard in that game mode. 15 damage a tick. And that, that uh, you just ain't trying to die in the storm. That's embarrassing. Don't do it. So yeah, you probably appreciate the fact that there is something to keep you alive from storm, from embarrassing yourself, and from just dying to storm. Did I say it prevents you from dying to storm? Yeah, it prevents you from dying to storm for like 15 seconds. Also, you might be a little bit more ballsier than a regular player because you know you can bring out the respirator when the storm comes. Yay! Also, if you're wondering why I'm playing on the holdout version, that's because I got bored of playing on the normal game mode and I wanted to spice it up a little bit and use the equipments in different scenarios that are just a bit more unique compared to the normal game mode. Also, if you have no idea how to play this game mode, you type in chat slash start holdout, no spaces, no caps, all together. Anyways, back to it. Next, we have the Caldera Black, which is not only good to negate morale penalty by 33%, or death morale penalty, but basically it's good if you have dead teammates a lot of the time, but it's also good because it gives you a 10% melee damage increase, a 10% defense increase, and a 15% uh, sorry movement speed increase, which I honestly didn't even know until this video, so I will probably be using this more on my melee oriented perks. And if you knew that, the effects that it grants, besides the morale penalty decrease, then I, I guess the stereotype is that you are good at reading and searching things up. On your research, you should go write an essay. I will not pay you. <laughs> now we have the shrapnel device. You either like the fact that it does a little bit of damage and disabilitates your enemies, or you like the fact that you can kind of clear rooms with it, or you like the noise it makes. Either way, it's effective to a point and can be used in a variety of ways, most of which is to unalive enemies. And honestly, that's all you can ask for in King Winter. And if you appreciate unaliving enemies, we can see eye to eye. But make sure you're only unaliving people in the game. If you do it in real life, then I take no responsibility for what you do. Especially if you blow people up. Don't, don't, don't do that. Now we have the hollow emitter, which means you're either one, a mirage main on Apex Legends, or two, you like the fact that you can get out of really bad situations in a split second by spamming them. And you do like the fact that they look like you. And you like to bask in your own glory as it walks away and gets shot by something else. And it is good for baiting out enemies in an area that you can't see. So if you don't have a profit, it is good for that. So if you use the hollow emitter seriously, you like to be a little cunning, witty, and you just like to use something that's a little bit more low-key. Meaning that you probably don't like things that aren't as flashy in real life. So yeah, we'll go with that. You know that tear gas is awesome and it's so easy to use. It's basically instant gratification. You have a problem, throw it down. You have two seconds to book it. If you don't book it, you're going to die because that's probably why you use the tear gas to avoid something that you're going to die to. So yeah, tear gas is used for very calm players who definitely never freak out whenever they run into a situation where they might die. D definitely, yep. <laughs> it's basically your get out of jail free card and players who like to use tear gas probably are a little bit more reckless or more tactical than other players because you basically can get out of almost everything with this item just by checking it on the ground it would be hilarious if for april fools red updated it so you were affected by it too <laughs> you're either playing as sovereign to make it easier to hex people when you shove them or you're playing as vagabond because it makes it easier for you to one-shot people after you shove them with the knife which is actually a cut that deals bleed damage, which is actually super utilizable by any other class and or perk because it's 12 damage with bleed on it. Ah, pff, I, what do I know? It's not like this is a video made of stereotypes made just for fun. Nope, that's not what this is at all. This is all purely fact. Yes, it is. Or you use it for the poison effect it does when you shoot it out, but I don't really know anybody who wastes it like that. But if you do, you're like the one in the thousand. Good job. You use the Dan Daniels because you recognize the effectiveness of its, well, you know, ability. It's basically like the Hemophytosis, whatever it's called, the blue serum that you inject into yourself, which gives you basically the same effect. Or you're just bored and you're trying to have a really fun time in a King Winter. And I mean like a really fun time in a King Winter. 
or you had a really long day at work and there's nothing else to do, you've cleared your schedule, and you're making time just for this one sip, but then before you know it, it becomes two sip and because you're a lightweight, then it just evolves into a whole series of your partner divorcing you, your kids leaving with your partner, you lose the custody battle because you took two sips instead of one, and then you're down on your luck, you spend all your money doing gambling and then you lose all the money you go to loan sharks to gamble some more you can't buy back your money the loan sharks come after you and your money they take away your teeth they take away your fingernails they take away your your, your, your body parts and then before you know it you're just the person who's broken at the bar and then you start a bar fight and then the bottle that you've carried with you the one that you take two sips from you break it on the table in self-defense not really because you started the fight and then you try to stab someone but they turn around and stab you and then there's no lazarus to save you and you're down on the floor you're bleeding out there's no health insurance in decaying winter and you die off two sips. In other words, drink responsibly. You want to torture yourself. Like you want to, like you get some weird feeling out of it. We have a word for it, but I'm not gonna use it because I don't know the ages of my audience. And, um, or, or you take less than 20 damage from every fight. And if you do, then teach me your ways because that's kind of the only time this is useful. Yeah, if you didn't know, it will heal you all the way if you are less than 20 HP from reaching max health, and you will remove normal bleed. But if not, then you'll only heal for 5 HP without getting rid of bleed. But why would you use this? I don't know anyone who actually uses this. If you use the Constantina Bomb, you either appreciate being able to clear out areas kind of effectively, defending areas pretty effectively, or most of all what it's known for, team killing. It's super good at team killing, because if you don't tell allies, I guarantee you, they'll run over it more than enemies will, especially if they're not as cautious as they probably should be to King Winter. But what it says about you is that you probably take your fights away from enemies, as in you more prefer ranged weapons, because I haven't ever seen a Berserker or an Executioner or a Vagabond fight around this, because you yourself can get hit by it, and why would you want to do that? You're crazy if you do that, and I respect that. Yeah, that's it. It's a pretty solid defensive option, a pretty mediocre offensive option, and a pretty good team killer option. It's probably as effective as the Blitzer in some cases. Killing, you like killing from afar, you like one shotting enemies, you like trick shots, and you like arcs. Because that's exactly what this fire is, and it's an arc. It goes up, it comes down. It's a throwing knife, of course it's gonna do that. But for real, yeah, you, it's, you appreciate how effective it is at clearing an area. Combined with some perks like the Drifter, it can be amazing. Just uh, don't miss, and make sure the enemies aren't aware of you. It won't be as useful, but it's still useful because 50 damage is nothing to laugh at, but I mean, compare that to a one shot. So yeah, you love efficiency, efficacy, and efficiency. Yep. <laughs> also, you might like acting like you're an assassin, and that's perfectly fine because that's kind of what they're good for. Or as some hardcore fans would say, you're afraid of melee and parry. <laughs> Yep, that's it. I have no words to say. And no, I'm not surprised I made that shot. I'm very surprised I made that shot. Anyways, everyone, this has been the equipment stereotypes for Decaying Winter. I might do one for the traits. I don't know, the traits are kind of more boring to cover. In my opinion, I might just do a regular gameplay video with me talking about the traits in the background. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed and have a great rest of your day, inner night, inner morning, inner evening, inner midnight. Bye bye. Hey. Subscribe. You don't have hey. to, but you should. Hey. Yeah. Ah.